Meantime, a homicide investigation is underway after a shooting in Hollywood. Police say officers found a man suffering from a gunshot wound in the area of North 24th Avenue off Hollywood Boulevard around 2.30 this morning. Investigators say that man was shot after a dispute with a shooting suspect who took off from that scene. The victim was taken to Memorial Regional where he later died from his injuries. His name has not yet been released. Police making an alarming discovery inside an illegally parked car in Miami Beach. Police say these firearms, one of which was reported stolen, were found inside an unoccupied vehicle parked in the bike lane along Washington Avenue. Now, police also say they found drugs inside that car. Two men were arrested and charged with multiple felonies. One of the suspects is 19-year-old Johnny Jean. Police say Jean was already on probation for burglary and was wearing an ankle monitor at the time of his arrest. He was also in possession of a ski mask. All right, weather this weekend, it's been good. It's just a little on the warm side. We've been running a bit of a temperature. 84 was our high today. The record for today was 86. So the weekend was all for the warm weather lovers. If you're looking for that cooler stuff, it's in the forecast. It's not that far off either. Coming up next. Up to the minute forecast with meteorologist Luke Doris. Only on Local 10 News, your weather authority. Welcome back, everyone. Let's talk about this amazing weather that we've been having this weekend. Did you go running today? I did. Beautiful weather to go yes. running this morning. And, and guess what? A cold front is coming up. I, I can't wait. Too. Looking we're forward we're here to it. for it, Luke. <laughs> I'm with you on the run, too, Laren. Finally, you know, whenever we got to today, the wind settled down and you weren't fighting that. You know, you go on your daily run. It was rough last week, but all right, here's the deal. Uh, the weekend's been feeling good around here. But this front's on the way and it's going to change things up a little bit. Few showers around as it passes through tonight. A temperature drop for tomorrow. This isn't a massive one. I don't I don't want you to think blockbuster front, but it will bring a little bit of a chill. Some 50s and some of the nights ahead. All right, right now we're in the 80s. We made it to 84 today, so warmer than you would expect here in early January. Southwest winds that are light 
at about 5 to 10. That's good. 76 in Key West. We'll wait for that wind to switch directions out of the northwest. That's what grabs that cooler air from the north. So not here yet. So our evening, we keep it in the 70s till about midnight or so, and then only 60s past that. Rain chance will pick up a little bit tonight as well. Again, that's that front coming through. All right, so this one's easy to spot. 81 in West Palm. It drops by about 15 or so degrees as you head north to Tampa and Orlando. So not Arctic air, but cooler nonetheless. And it's on the, the crawl. It's a real slow move. Mover. Finally tonight kicks on through. Here it is tomorrow morning. You wake up in the mid 60s cooler, still warmer than normal for early January, believe it or not. And then the afternoon mid 70s will do it. Tomorrow's going to be about eight degrees cooler than what we had today. That just takes us back to baseline, back to normal. But the coolest air will come in on late Monday night, early Tuesday morning. That's where we have the 50s, 55 in Miami, maybe slightly cooler if you're inland. And then the Keys, you'll have the 60s, somewhere in the low 60s, though, most likely. Let's talk about the rain end of things. Not a lot here. Uh, you can see the clouds. We had a good deal of cloud cover today, but you don't see much green on the radar. There's just not that much moisture for this one to uh, latch on to. So cloud cover, maybe a sprinkle as we go through tonight or a quick passing light shower. This is by 11 o'clock or so. You saw some of these flare up here. That'd be about it. There's late tonight, early tomorrow morning and into the afternoon. Clouds. I think tomorrow's going to be kind of a gray day. Rain chance, I'm only going to go 20% for tomorrow. And then some supreme weather comes in starting Tuesday, Wednesday. This week is great. 65 degrees tonight with that cold front moving through. Maybe a shower in there tomorrow. 60s in the morning, go to the mid 70s for the afternoon. Note the sky, got a milky look to it. And the rain chance again, 20%. Northwest winds, not bad, about 5 to 10. Look at this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 70s in the afternoons, 50s, maybe low 60s at night. There comes a warmer day on Friday, and then we repeat this whole thing. This next front comes in time for the weekend, and it's an identical twin. It takes us right back down to the 70s with sunshine. Good looking weekend ahead. All right, Will, take it away. Outlook, good looking forecast. Unfortunately, not a good looking game for the Dolphins today. A blowout in Buffalo, and the Dolphins' playoff chances all but over what happened to Tua, what happened to the offense and the defense will hear from Tua. We'll have the low lights next in sports.
Look at 10 Sports with Will Manso. There is no doubt the Miami Dolphins have had an incredible season. 10 wins after winning five games last year. Brian Flores' second season has gone to plan. But today, it didn't go to plan. And because of it, the Dolphins are likely on the outside looking in in the playoffs this season. They'll need a miracle. It didn't happen today for Tua Tagovailoa in Buffalo. Just a disappointing game overall for Tua and for the Dolphins' offense, their defense. Josh Allen here for the Bills. Isaiah McKenzie, seven-yard touchdown. Bills were up early. And they kept rolling, and it was that combination again later. Allen to McKenzie, a 14-yard touchdown this time. By the way, McKenzie, a South Florida guy, he went to American Heritage and Plantation, and boy, did he take it to the team from the area where he grew up. He wasn't done. McKenzie on the punt, takes the punt return, and see you later. 84 yards for the touchdown, a 21-3 lead. The blowout was on to the second half. The Dolphins tried their best to keep it close. Drive down the field by Tua leads to Miles Gaskin for a one-yard touchdown. It was 28-13 in the third. Any glimmer of hope, though, would go away from one of Tua's three interceptions in this game. Tonga Valoa in this offense, just no rhythm. Picked off by Josh Norman. Devontae Parker fell on the route. Norman took advantage. 35-13 Bills. A day to forget for Tua and the Finns. They fall 56-26 the final. It's always tough. You know, when you're coming off a loss, you know, the feeling of losing never feels good. Um, you know, so I, I would say the, you know, the emotions are not just me, but, you know, a lot of the guys in the locker room, it, it's, it's a bitter taste in our mouth. That's, you know, that's not a way we want it to, to go down. You know, the Miami Heat off to a slow start at 2-3 and three this year, but tomorrow night they will debut the Vice Versa jerseys. Against the Oklahoma City Thunder, this is the last year of the Vice campaign that has been so popular. See this video you're watching here, the team released it. It's the pay player intro video that will play before games when the Heat do wear those jerseys again, starting tonight, tomorrow night against the Thunder. As for the Dolphins, I mentioned that they have slim playoff hopes with Laren and Sonella. Here's the breakdown. The only way they get in is that the Jags upset the Colts they're playing right now, and right now Jacksonville is down 17 to nothing. So get the rosary beads, get praying, do whatever it is that you need to do, South Florida, because it's going to take a miracle at this point for the Dolphins to make the postseason. So we'll see. Will, Laren, and I will be praying in the makeup room. Look, brother didn't have to stun on the Dolphins like that with the dancing, but I was here for the dancing. In the meantime, that's all for right now. But remember, our website, local10.com, is always on, updating night and day with the latest headlines. And we're not done just yet. We'll see you for more Local 10 News at 6.
Right now on Local 10 News, vaccine rollout. Two drive through locations are now open in Broward County. The U.S. has reached and surpassed a new grim milestone in the pandemic. What healthcare workers are worried about as people return from holiday destinations. Danger on duty in Homestead. Why police officers say they were forced to draw their guns and open fire. A deadly crash in Pembroke Park. A witness describes what she saw right before the impact. Playoff push. The Dolphins head into Buffalo trying to keep their playoff dreams alive. Good evening. I'm Larry Livingston. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sonella Sabovic. Local 10 News at 6 is next. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. We start with vaccine plans in South Florida today. Two drive through locations have opened up in Broward County. And it's been a struggle for seniors to get an appointment for a vaccination. And Local 10's Terrell Fournay is live at the location in Davie to show us how things are going now. Well, things are wrapping up for right now, but we have heard from senior citizens who tell us they have been waiting for weeks to get one of these COVID-19 vaccines, and they thought that showing up uh, here to Vista View Park in Davie was perhaps their best shot. But even some folks with appointments were turned away. Hundreds of people showed up in the end. Many of those uh, did uh, get vaccinated. Many of those people did receive those shots, but it was certainly a very rocky day. The line of cars stretched throughout the park and down a side street for most of the day. And in every one of those vehicles were people pushing to get a COVID-19 vaccine. The line was around the corner and it took us an hour just to get here to the entrance to be told there was a glitch in the computer. But if we were OK to stay, that we were welcome to stay and it would be a couple more hours. Jonathan Tabachnikov is a health care worker himself, but he made the trip today solely for his 74 year old mother. The two have struggled to find her an appointment until a spot opened up online this morning. He says his wife actually booked it. Others showing up today were also hoping for the best after the website to secure spots repeatedly crashed while even making that booking. Absolutely very fortunate. My daughter-in-law saved the day for me. The site kept crashing, so we tried to get back in, and they said, you can't get back in. You're already registered with an appointment. So I'm hoping that their uh, technology is up to snuff right now and that they do have the availability to find my name there. The demand was just as high at a second vaccination site at Trade Winds Park in Coconut Creek, which also opened up today to inoculate senior citizens by appointment only. The vaccine rollout in the state of Florida has been rocky, and the head of the department which oversees the program was on this week in South Florida today to explain why. So it's tough to do long range planning when you're only getting a seven day uh, you know, look and when the vaccine is coming. Also, there's a lot of hesitancy, unfortunately, with a lot of providers on the second shot, because again, we don't have a really good look on when that second shot is coming, even though the first delivery of the second shot did arrive. 
and the director of Florida's Division of Emergency Management says that they are monitoring these vaccine site rollouts and uh, monitoring all of these problems and will assess the needs as the week goes on so that things run very smoothly. And for folks who did get a shot today, they already have an appointment, at least for now, for that second shot because this is the two-shot Pfizer vaccine uh, that was being dispersed here. But nonetheless, those problems with the website, they are still ongoing. We checked a few minutes ago that website is still down, and that's the only way to get an appointment here in Broward County for seniors 65 and older. Reporting live from Davie, I'm Terrell Fournay, Local 10 News. All right, thanks, Terrell. And here are the latest numbers of new infections here in the state of Florida. Statewide, there are more than 10,600 new cases. Of those, more than 1,500 are in Miami-Dade County, 900 in Broward, and 17 reported in Monroe County. And the U.S. reaching and surpassing a grim milestone this weekend. More than 350,000 Americans have now died from COVID-19. Healthcare facilities still dealing with the post-Thanksgiving surge. They're not preparing for post-Christmas and New Year's increase. More than 350,000 Americans have lost their lives to COVID-19. The country seeing more than 20 million cases of the virus. President Trump taking to Twitter this morning, falsely claiming the numbers from the CDC are exaggerated. The deaths are real deaths. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying he did not anticipate the death toll in the United States would reach the level it has. There's no running away from the numbers. It's something that we absolutely got to grasp and get our arms around and turn that, turn that inflection down by very intensive adherence to the public health measures. The nation's top infectious disease expert blames indoor activity and holiday travel in part for facilitating recent transmission of the virus. It is expected that 1.3 million people will be flying today, returning home from holiday destinations. Overburdened health care systems still dealing with the post Thanksgiving surge are concerned. That's really why it's so frightening. We haven't seen Christmas numbers yet and we haven't seen New Year's for sure. Four states, California, Texas, Florida, and New York, all hitting 1 million COVID cases, and Illinois is on track to be next. As the number of cases continues to surge, the rollout of the vaccines has faced challenges. Nationwide, only about 4.2 million Americans have been vaccinated, so far falling short of the Trump administration's goal of 20 million by the end of 2020. A lot of this is because public health care systems that are already taxed with contact tracing and managing this actual COVID-19 disease are also taxed with distributing this vaccine and they need more help. Houston opening the city's first public vaccine event on Saturday. I just want to get back to life. You know, I just want to get back to normal. I want to see my kids. I want to go back to work. The plan was to administer 750 shots. They got 250,000 calls. And starting tomorrow, those who were first in line to get the Pfizer vaccine are now due for their second shot. Now to a developing story out of Homestead where there has been a police involved shooting. A suspect is now dead. Local 10's Trent Kelly is live in Homestead with the latest details. Trent. Sanella, all of this taking place right in front of the Homestead City Hall, which tonight remains an active crime scene. What started as a burglary call quickly took a turn after officers say the suspect behind all of this pulled out a gun and started to fire. A police involved shooting coming to an end on the steps of the Homestead City Hall. It all happened overnight as Homestead PD was responding to a burglary call around 2.30 in the morning at a home not too far from City Hall between Chrome Avenue and US-1. But after arriving at the scene, officers say the suspect started running away, police later tracking him down in the area near City Hall. At some point in the, in the, in the course of the incident, the subject produced a firearm, shot at the Homestead officers, forcing the officers to return fire, striking this individual. The suspect was later pronounced dead at the scene. We watched as detectives used a yellow tarp to cover up the handcuffed body with what appeared to be a handgun sitting on the ground nearby. The front of City Hall also covered with bullet holes as yellow evidence markers appeared to mark shell casings in the nearby parking lot. While no officers were hurt in the shooting, police say they were inches away from having a different outcome. It was in this incident as well that a police officer from the city of Homestead um, sustained a gunshot wound that went through his pant leg but did not penetrate his leg. Friends and family members later gathering at the scene awaiting more information as to what led up to their loved one's death. I'm upset, you know, because it's, it's friends of the family, you know what I mean? And the cops need to be justified for this and they're getting away with it.
And so far, the name of the victim in all of this has not been released. By the way, we're told the Miami-Dade Police Department has now taken the lead in this ongoing investigation. That's the latest live from Homestead tonight. Trent Kelly, Local 10 News. All right, thank you, Trent. Switching gears now, the Miami Dolphins wrapping up the regular season in Buffalo. And not in a good way. The no. Fins hoped for a playoff spot. Let's get right to Sports Director Will Mann. So with the, I think you called them low lights earlier today, Will. <laughs> Yeah, the game itself was ugly. Now, here's the silver lining, the positive. The Dolphins still could make the playoffs, though at this point it is almost a miracle for it to happen. It will take that, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's get to the highlights of what happened in this game. Yes, the lowlights. It was that bad for this team, struggling so much. And, and really, the, the reality is they just could not get anything going in any way. I mean, the touchdown early from Josh Allen to John Brown, it was 28-6 before you blink your eyes. And then Tua Tagovailoa who had the worst game of his rookie season, picked off three times. This one where Devontae Parker fell in the route, Josh Norman jumped it, 16-yard touchdown return. Bills go on to steamroll the Dolphins, 56-26 to the final. We didn't play well enough in any phase to win the game. We're going to play well against a good football team. We didn't do that. And uh, I know we're all, we're all disappointed. They are, I am. Didn't do enough. So the Dolphins finish the regular season at 10 and 6. The only way they make the playoffs now is if Jacksonville upsets Indianapolis in a game in action right now. And the Jags are down 20 to 7 in the third quarter. So it's going to take a big comeback to make it happen. Of course, we'll have much more in sports. And tonight, a full wrap of what happened on Sports Sunday. We'll see you then. For now, though, that is for, that is for sports. I'm Will Mansell, Local 10 News. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Well, thanks. There was a new beginning today on Capitol Hill. A new Congress was sworn in. A look ahead at the challenges they'll face coming up on World News tonight at 630. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I know you don't. Also, President Trump on tape putting pressure on Georgian officials to recalculate the vote in his favor. More on this is also ahead on World News Tonight at 6.30. A deadly crash in Pembroke Park. A car smashes right into a storefront. We hear from a witness on the other side of this break.
A deadly crash in Pembroke Park today. A car slammed right into a business. Local 10's Parker Branton has the latest. We are told a car was traveling fast eastbound on Hallandale Beach Boulevard. At some point it lost control, went into this parking lot. You can see the red lines left behind by BSO detectives. The car then went airborne, crashing into several parked cars and damaging a door front. One person is dead after a destructive crash Sunday morning. This was the scene along Hallandale Beach Boulevard between 40th and 48th Avenue. Witnesses say a car was traveling east on Hallandale Beach Boulevard when it lost control and went airborne into a shopping plaza. And I saw them speeding at a high rate. And then I said to my, my client, I said, oh my God, look at those two cars going down the road. And, um, and then I heard bow and then I came over and one of the car was inside of the building and the girl was, was just dead in the car. We are told the driver of that car that lost control is a woman and was ejected. She would die on scene. At least six parked cars were damaged in this single car crash. One of them was pushed right through the front doors of Thirsty's Bar. Bar workers said off camera they were closed and cleaning up when this happened. The Broward Sheriff's Office blocked this part of the roadway for much of the morning. They are working to find out what exactly led up to this crash. Thirsty's Bar is the damaged door front you are taking a look at. They say that no one was inside beside two workers who were just cleaning up because of COVID-19 precautions. They close earlier in the night. Meantime, BSO detectives still trying to figure out what led up to this crash and the identity of that woman has not been released. We're in Pembroke Park. I'm Parker Branton, Local 10 News. And switching to the forecast, no complaints from me with this weekend's weather. It's been a little bit on the warm side. Winter has been MIA. We made it to 84 degrees today, but we're about to shake things up. A cold front is on the way. It passes through tonight. See your forecast next. Up to the minute forecast with meteorologist Luke Doris. Only on Local 10 News, your weather authority.
Laren, we have nothing to complain about down here in South Florida. It's been a great week, and it's about to get even better. Everybody yeah. else is cold yes. everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, they are. I get a kick out of our uh, national temperature maps this time of year. Look at this. You know, we do things our own way here in South Florida. The weather's no different. Everybody's got the tinge of the blues and even the grains here in Texas. 60s, 50s, 30s, and so on. And then 79 is what we have here in Miami. You know, winter has been in hiding over our weekend. Today was 84 degrees. It was a little bit humid, but we're about to switch things back. So if you've been missing wintry type weather, it's on the way. Front passes through tonight. Now we're going to drop our nights back into the 50s. I don't want you to think that this is just going to be a big punch of Arctic air, but it will turn a little bit cooler as we go through this week, starting on Tuesday morning. Check this out. Sunset tonight. This is from Pompano Beach. You see these lines right here? That's what you call a crepuscular ray, and they really dazzle. So if you get a, the sunset back behind the clouds, that passes through, gives you that shadow effect. Really cool stuff. All right. Great evening here in South Florida. Miami is at 79 right now. Southwest wind at 11, and you felt this today. The dew point, the humidity. Anytime that that number is close to 70, you'll feel it outside. It wasn't summertime humidity, but maybe something like you would expect in April or May. Today was kind of an April issue kind of afternoon evening. We're still warm low 70s at 10 and midnight skycast generally looks good. If you're going to go for a walk or anything like that tonight, it'll still be pretty good. The front is stalled right over Lake Okeechobee right now and behind it. It's about 15 degrees cooler. So again, not a smack in the face kind of front with the temperatures, but cooler nonetheless. And we do have a little bit of cloud cover that we noticed today and a few very light showers. Not a lot of moisture to work with on this front. So let's take a look at the future radar. See what the computers have to say. They do bring clouds. I, I think this is more of a cloud producer than much of a rain producer. But in the morning on Mondays, you start out your work week, maybe a stray shower. Mid 60s is where we start into the afternoon. Clouds may be tough to shake temperatures near normal. That means mid 70s for us in the afternoon. Then the cooler air really spills in late Monday night, early Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, 50s. Then we'll warm it back up. These are our nighttime lows. And then there's another front in the forecast. Watch this. We warm things up as we head into late in the week. There's Friday. This one is basically a carbon copy of the one that we'll get later on tonight. And then we look ahead into your weekend and we'll do this whole thing again. It's, it's going to be just fantastic weather as we go into next weekend. Make your plans outside. 65 degrees does it tonight. Few showers are possible. Here's a look at tomorrow. We'll go 65 in the morning, 76 for the afternoon. Rain chance low, but not quite nothing at 20%. Look, we're just showing off now. 70s and sunshine Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday warms up a bit, and then there's that second dose that comes in and makes for superb weather next weekend. All right, Will. Luke, thanks so much. I wish I could look into next week and see if the Dolphins will be playing. It's going to take almost a miracle after what happened in Buffalo today. A blowout in Buffalo. The Bills handle the Finns, and now Miami needs to pray for a chance to make the postseason. We'll update you on what's going on next in sports.
Week of Ten Sports with Will Manso. The Dolphins' playoff hopes are still alive, even though they had an awful performance today to end the regular season in Buffalo, hurting their chances. I'll update you on the playoff chances in a moment, but let's get to what happened against the Bills. And boy, it was ugly for Tua Tagovailoa, the offense, the defense, you name it. This is just one of those games you want to forget. Early on, Josh Allen to Isaiah McKenzie, a seven-yard touchdown, put the Bills on top, seven to three. That combination, far from done, especially McKenzie. Allen to McKenzie, again, a 14-yard touchdown. Gave the Bills a 14-3 lead. You know, he's a South Florida kid. He went to American Heritage and Plantation and taking it to the team that plays in the area he grew up in. This now a punt return by McKenzie. 84 yards later, it is another Bills touchdown. They build a huge lead in this one, up 28-6 at one point. Dolphins, though, start chipping away in the third quarter. At least they tried to. A nice drive led by Tua who really struggled throughout the game. Miles Gaskin, one yard touchdown. It's 28-13, a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of hope that is all but gone. When Tua throws this pick six to Josh Norman, Devontae Parker falls on the route. One of three interceptions on the day for Tua. One of his worst performances as a rookie, really as a team, the Dolphins were awful today. They fall 56 to 26, the finals. It's always tough you know, when you're coming off a loss. You know, the feeling of losing never feels good. Um, you know, so I, I would say the, you know, the emotions, but not just me, but, you know, a lot of the guys in the locker room, it, it's, it's a bitter taste in our mouth. That's, you know, that's not a way we want it to, to go down. As for the Miami Heat, they've gone down three times already this season at two and three, a slow start. But tomorrow night, the Heat will debut their vice versa jerseys when they host the Oklahoma City Thunder at the arena. This is the last season of the Vice campaign, and what you're watching now is the video the team released that will actually introduce the players wearing those jerseys. Very, very snazzy looking as usual. Hopefully it brings them a win. Again, they debut tomorrow night through those uniforms when they take on the Thunder at the arena. As for the playoff possibilities that I promised you, I mentioned the Dolphins are technically still alive for the playoff. Whatever you were doing, Sonella and Laren, keep doing it. Because remember we were talking and it was, it was 20 to nothing. Right. Colts on the Jags. The Jags have to win for the Dolphins to stay alive. Well, right now it is 20 to 14 in the third quarter. So if the Jacks can catch up and win that game, the Dolphins are in the playoffs. So whatever you need to do, guys, keep doing what you were doing. Keep doing it. Okay, we'll there's still hope. Sunday. Look, cross <laughs> fingers, hope. praying <laughs> hands. Look, sign of the cross, whatever you need to do. <laughs> yeah, combination, whatever you need. All right, well, thanks. And that's all for right now. But remember our website, local10.com. It's always on updating all night, every day with the latest headlines. And we will see you tonight for more Local 10 News. Have a good evening, everyone. Enjoy that weather.